Hi from Perth, Western Australia. Um, I'm the co-founder and leader of the Global Classroom Project, um, which is an online community which actually celebrated its second birthday last weekend. Um, and our function is to help teachers and students around the world connect, uh, learn, share and collaborate globally. Um, so we are approaching the last two years we started with six, the first project we had six teachers and we're currently approaching some 400 teachers, several thousand students, um, covering 42 countries which is quite scary. Um, it's been quite an interesting little process actually, um, but extremely rewarding. There's a bit of a story to this. Um, after we completed our very first global classroom project, um, my partner Deb Frazier in America decided that we, she wanted to run a project for an entire school year and see if we could get um, people from six continents to come and join us. Um, so I did what I did best and used Twitter and we found ourselves with 50 people signed up from K to 12 in the space of two weeks. Uh, <laughs> which in hindsight was extremely scary. Um, and the whole idea of building a community um, actually grew out of the fact that I couldn't manage 50 people doing one project. Um, and so the course of several sleepless nights um, came up with the idea to ask people how they wanted to connect and collaborate. Being an online community, um, we, we were members literally spread out across the world. Uh, it wasn't possible for us to have a completely um, synchronous uh, community base. Um, we needed to have spaces which people could dip into at the point of need 24-7, uh, uh, 365 days a year. It's not possible for a single person to manage this. Um, we, in our initial setup, we had a team, we set up a team of teachers who would run different spaces. Um, that's evolved over time. We now have a Global Classroom Lead Teacher um, project and Global Classroom Mentors. Um, so that many of our Global Classroom Lead Teachers, for example, will run their own projects and they'll assist with the running of Twitter chats um, and contribute to discussions on the Skype and Facebook groups and just help people join in the conversations. This is one example of a global classroom project, um, the Save the Rhinos, um, run by a global classroom lead teacher. Um, she was one of our, one of the first teachers to sign up to the global classroom. Um, and this project has truly exploded over the last couple of months. Um, instead of running for nine months, it looks like it's going to run for about two years. Um, it, it involves a group of stuffed uh, rhino mascots travelling the world. Um, and students are creating multimedia and raising awareness about rhino conservation, as well as raising funds for um, rhino charities in South Africa. Um, and the project that I run uh, is the Global Classroom Scrapbook Project, um, which again is a project that came to me in the middle of the night. Um, it has proved to be one of the most popular and successful projects we've run, and it basically involves sending three scrapbooks um, around the world. Um, the, the scrapbook that's seen here actually came back to Australia last year after visiting Romania, um, the United Kingdom, and South Africa. Um, it's currently, as best of my knowledge, in Canada um, and will be taken to the ISTE conference in July where it'll come home to, in someone's suitcase back to Australia. Um, one scrapbook quite 
infamously got uh, misplaced in the Honduran mail mail office, much to our disgust. <laughs> um, and the other one, I believe, is somewhere in the United States. Um, so there's three of them, and this will become an iron project um, with the with running through the world's largest global education community as well. So I've actually got one coming home to Perth in the next couple of weeks to take to Qatar, so I'm fingers crossed it will arrive safely. I suppose if we start with my personal experience, um, it, you know, being connected, um, being able to meet teachers and meet students on the other side of the world, um, it completely, completely changes the way you see the world. Um, it has a really deep impact on our students as well as our, t our teachers. Um, you know, we wake up in the morning we we'll sign into our groups and it's, we don't necessarily have to say good morning, you know, it's good afternoon, good evening. Um, there may be people up in the middle of the night, people who never sleep. Um, you know, we learn, you know, it's, we often just talk about the weather. Um, you know, we see a picture from outside someone's school window and it's blazing hot outside our, our room and they've got a blanket of snow. Um, but it, it's the simple things, you know, like the picture that we have on the slide here is a group of students um, from the SAV school in Nepal um, meeting the principal or the, the school leader, Govinda Panthi, um, and learning about the work he does with two laptops and a 256 kilobit internet connection. Um, it's just inspiring. Um, his students are more connected with the world, um, better able to both communicate um, and share their culture, but also learn from experts around the world than most people in the Western world. Um, and it is truly humbling you know, to meet people like Govinda um, and other global education leaders around the world because they inspire me. Um, and that's ultimately the reason why I do what, what I do, is because I can't go back to four walls. Um, once you connect beyond your classroom walls, you can't turn back, um, because you're learning with the world rather than just about it. Um, and it literally does change everything. You can't teach and can't learn in the same way again.